When he was six years old, my son Bruno came up to me and said, Mama, I'm really mad. But I think that when I'm really sad, it's just easier to be angry. I was speechless for a moment before he added that when he was angry, he felt powerful and he felt like lava in his body. But when he was sad, it felt like he was not feeling strong and it felt like a rock in his chest. I wanted to take him in my arms to make him feel better. But instead, I said to him, Bruno, do you think a tree wants to be something other than a tree? Do you think a yellow flower wishes to be red? Do you think a mountain wishes to be flat? Of course, he said, no, Mamo, no, of course not. And I said, well, it's the same for your heart. It doesn't wish to do anything that it was not meant to do. Feel happy when it's happy, sad when it's sad, and angry when it's angry. He looked at me and said, oh, I get it. The heart just wants to tell the truth. And I said to him, yes, Bruno, telling the truth is what makes it strong. Why is it that we as human beings, each one of us with a body, tends to disconnect from it? It is in our body that lives the heart. Therefore, it is where we can experience the power that love is. And yet, for most of us, just the idea of walking in life with an open heart at all moments would seem so unsafe and unreasonable. So we live in the dichotomy because of fear of wanting to feel love and disconnecting from our heart, which ultimately is the only place where we can experience the authentic power of being vulnerable, fully alive, and feel love. Now, for the past 30 years, I have been teaching workshops. All my participants are from different walks of life, and I teach them how to bypass their conscious mind, to dive into their body, to uncover the inherent intelligence and wisdom of the body. But today, let's look at it from a scientific perspective. The human body is a little universe, a microcosm inside the great universe. Scientists seem to think that the universe is growing like a giant brain. The neurons in the brain actually are equivalent to the number of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Our body mirrors the Earth, and Earth is in relationship to the universe, and vice versa, according to specific laws of physics. Now, one of the primary ones is how Earth and Sun relate to one another, according to the law of magnetism and gravity. The law of magnetism means two things attract each other or repel one another. The rays of the sun are magnetized by the energy of fire that emanates from within the Earth, and the merging of the energy, so to speak, creates our beloved world. Now, let's apply this law to the human body. According to this law, our mind and heart are naturally supposed to be in an harmonious relationship, co-creating with one another, like Earth and Sun does. Imagine how your life would be different if that was the case, what you would be able to experience and create in life. But now imagine that the Earth and Sun magnetism is reversed according to the same law. They would repel one another, therefore sever their relationship. It's unthinkable. All their creation would be gone. So think about you, how you, your mind, repel your heart through resistance. In wanting to protect it, it controls it. Therefore, it overpowers it. With all its justification, the mind prevents our heart from doing what it's meant to do, to feel, to express, and be its equal. Now, it is also true that no matter how much we resist our heart, we cannot stop having experiences. That is the truth for as long as we live. And I call these experiences emotions. So what is the difference between emotions and feelings. Emotions are the reaction of your mind into your body to the thoughts in your head. 
They are practices like meditation that teaches you to clear the mind, which in turn allows the body to be calm and relaxed. But I have also discovered through 30 years of teaching thousands of people that emotions are also the experiences your mind creates in reaction to the feelings in your heart. And when that happens, that means that your emotion replaces the feelings in your heart and that the consequences are immense because you can no longer access the truth and the wisdom of your heart. And it can create confusion in choices you make in life. So I'm going to take a couple of examples. You meet someone, you're attracted to the person, but you experience fear. Is the fear because your heart has intuition and is telling you, do not go out with this person? Or is it because you're afraid of being rejected? Or you have a job offer and it's a magnificent one. It fits everything you want and yet you feel anxious. Is it because it's the wrong job and ultimately you will not be happy? Or is it because it is the right job? It will challenge you to go and confront your fears of the unknown and expand yourself, but you don't feel comfortable and you have self-doubt. So to give back clarity in our life, we need to give back our heart its rightful place inside of us. We need to let go of the belief that we need to protect our heart. And instead, we need to accept with humility that it is our heart that will protect us from making mistakes when we go against it and against its wisdom. We need to accept that our mind is powerful, but our heart is equally powerful. It's just different. And when we do that, we realign ourselves and we can ignite within us passion from deep within the self, beyond anything you have known about yourself and ever experienced about yourself. A passion that is a way of being, that is teaching you to be calm and fearless because you will never fear your fears again, ever in your life. It also will give you the courage to learn to embody the depth of your own humanity. Now, think about the world we can create for our children. A world where we can teach them to never forget the wisdom they were born with. A world where we can teach them what can truly make them invincible. Not invincible like our superheroes with their superpower to fight the evil in the world, but invincible with the human power that our, our body and our heart grant us to conquer our inner struggle. It is their birthright. It is your birthright. And it is every human being birthright. Thank you.